This pleasant street is in San Remo, California. As nice a place to live as you'll find anywhere in the West. And here are Phil and Laura Martin, waiting impatiently for their daughter Sally, due home from college. Well, here she is at last, and about time. But not only is Sally home for the summer, to their surprise, she's brought a guest along, Francis Gray, a college chum who lives in New York. The usual fond greetings, of course, as anyone greets their favorite only daughter. Then the Martins begin to wonder why Sally's friend Francis is stopping off in San Remo before going east, San Remo being quite a bit out of her way. But they soon find out. Well, Mother and Dad, we may as well confess, we have a plan. Oh? First, I'll show Franny San Remo. Okay. I don't want to take 20 or 30 minutes. <laughs> Then I'll go east with her, and she'll show me New York. How about it? That's a good even, Stephen, proposition. Mother, your daughter's a born bargainer. All the way to New York? Oh, gosh, Mrs. Martin, you make it sound like the end of the world. Really, it's only a few hours away. A few hours? Of course, Mother. You can fly coast to coast in only eight hours. Well, if it's all right with your family, friend, it's okay with me. How about you, Mother? Well, yes, I suppose so. Oh, Mother and Daddy, you're the most of <laughs> New York, here we come. Not so fast, young lady. What about reservations? Well, it uh, so happens that we... Well, we've already reserved seats on TWA. You're real sure of yourself, weren't you? Okay, darling. I'll pick them up this afternoon. <laughs> Great. <laughs> well, after visiting with us a few days, the girls were off bound for New York. They were walking on air even before they got on board. For Sally, this was the time of her young life. And for Frances, it was a treat to have Sally along. I remember the first time I took that trip by air, and I knew what it would mean to Sally. They told us all about it in postcards we received a couple of days later. All about the fun they were having, the thrill of being airborne by constellation on a sky-high adventure over this great land of ours, wonderful sights to see way down below. The Grand Canyon, for instance, one of the seven wonders of the world. I could easily imagine Sally's excitement at her first meal at 19,000 feet. And remembering the kind of food service, my guess is that both girls would have no trouble at all disposing of it. A really satisfying lunch, expertly prepared and tastefully served. After crossing the mountains, plains, and rivers of this great country, they were rewarded with a fine view of Manhattan and the metropolis of New York. Even Francis noted that although she'd seen it before, this towering city is always an inspiring sight from the air. Nowhere else are there so many buildings so tall and so closely packed together. Finally, they landed smoothly at Idlewild, the New York International Airport. sisters can be something of a nuisance, like being met at the airport. I'm Fran's brother, Bill, a one-man reception committee. And there they are, fresh out of the clouds. A 3,000-mile hop, and both look as fresh as a daisy. The usual brother-sister bit with Fran, and a good close-up look at the girlfriend from the West. Very nice. The first thing we did was drive out home. 
Fran was anxious to see the family and to introduce Sally. And when I found out it was Sally's first trip to the big city, it didn't take long to figure out a plan for a tour of the town, taking in the highlights, including an item or two usually missed by most visitors. For a broadside look at the city, I decided on the three-hour boat ride around Manhattan. An absolute must for anyone visiting New York. Here was a chance for Sally to see the famous waterfront, handling huge ocean liners, tugboats, and barges. As busy a stretch of waterway as you'll find anywhere in the world. Well, that's one of the world's best known and most beloved landmarks, the Statue of Liberty. A gift to America from the people of France. It stands on a little island in the bay. We're now at the tip of Manhattan, the Battery, where the original Dutch settlers first landed. Here is Castle Clinton, the ancient fort that is now dwarfed by towering skyscrapers. Scenes at the Museum of the City of New York show early days. Now here is Stone Street in 1659. And South Street under the towering sails of the famous clipper ships. The ships had raced from China with a harvest of tea. In 1792, the city's business leaders met under a buttonwood tree to found the New York Stock Exchange. Today, the exchange at Wall and Broad Streets stands on almost the exact spot at the center of the busy financial district. Here, where the sub-treasury building now stands, is where George Washington was inaugurated as first president of the United States. At the head of Wall Street stands Trinity Church, the first Protestant Episcopal parish in New York. The church was given a large tract of land by Queen Anne and became the richest parish in the country. The churchyard, said to be worth $25 million in real estate value, is the burial place of Robert Fulton, Alexander Hamilton, and other famous figures in American history. We rounded the tip of Manhattan and headed up the East River, under the Brooklyn Bridge. Sally was impressed with the Manhattan skyline along the East Side Drive, given new importance by that famous international landmark, the United Nations Building. This is the headquarters of the organization comprising some 75 nations devoted to world peace. Along First Avenue fly the flags of the member nations, with more added as new nations join. To this entrance come delegates of member nations from all over the world. When the General Assembly is in session, visitors crowd the galleries to see and hear the UN in action. Here we are inside the General Assembly, the most important meeting hall in the world today. We round to the top of Manhattan Island and we're back again on the Hudson River, moving south under the George Washington Bridge. This mighty bridge spans the Hudson from Manhattan to New Jersey. This is the West Side Drive, one of the major routes carrying traffic from the bridge and the New York and New England parkways. Commuters and motorists form a never-ending stream into and out of the metropolis of Manhattan. That massive dome building is Grant's tomb, and nearby the beautiful Riverside Church. The next day, the girls visited the Midtown area. They walked up fashionable Park Avenue with its fine hotels and apartments. Modern glass-walled office buildings also line this famous street. The headquarters are some of America's greatest industries. Two blocks away is fabulous Fifth Avenue. The girls were lucky to be there the day of a parade. Now, this is a mounted troupe of New York's finest. Along Fifth Avenue and on Lower Broadway is where heroes and visiting royalty are welcomed by the admiring city. 
As the bands play, the high school drill team does its rhythm dance in the street. Added enjoyment for a New Yorker and visitor alike. Fifth Avenue is world-renowned as the shopping center of New York. It also has culture, great museums, and the public library. Now, this is the nation's largest municipal library, containing over three and a half million volumes. The sidewalks along Fifth Avenue are always crowded with shoppers. Fran and Sally did some shopping, too. They were just window shopping here, though. Yes, this is the Tiffany's, the world-famous jewelry store. The girls really had themselves a field day. They visited practically every shop on both sides of Fifth Avenue. But I guess shopping is one of the chief attractions when visiting any city, particularly when that city happens to be New York. Here's an old friend from Greek mythology, Atlas, the strong man of the gods. Just as the book said, he's carrying the world on his shoulders. This is just one of the things that add character to the brick and stone of New York. Fran made sure that Sally saw Rockefeller Center, that city within a city. They stroll through the beautiful Channel Garden to the sunken plaza where a golden Prometheus looks over the outdoor restaurant. The flags of all nations add color to the scene. The restaurant was a good place to rest weary feet after their shopping tour. Sally was particularly impressed with what she called the uh, delightful continental atmosphere. <laughs> no, sir. San Remo was never like this. After lunch, there was no question as to what the next attraction was to be. Sally just had to go to the top of the famous RCA building for a bird's eye view of the city. This tremendous architectural masterpiece is actually a city within a city. Offices for thousands of workers, shops, theaters, radio and television studios. Name it and it's here. Seventy stories above the never-ending hustle of the city below, Sally and Fran were on the roof terrace, one of the city's most famous tourist attractions. One of the guides took over to point out and explain all about the highlights of mighty Manhattan sprawling endlessly below. From the street, New York is one thing. From up here? Well, Sally used one of the telescopes to get an even better look. From the Hudson River on the left, then north to Central Park, the patch of green country that has been maintained as a recreation area in spite of pressure from the city on all sides. To the east, the Queensboro Bridge spans the East River to Queens and Long Island. Fran had lived here all her life, but she had never seen this site. I guess Sally was showing her New York. Along the East River, the United Nations and Chrysler buildings. Brooklyn is in the distance. With the guide explaining the highlights, they completed the full circle when they saw the Empire State Building, tallest on earth, over 1,400 feet above the street. Directly across Fifth Avenue from Rockefeller Center is St. Patrick's. This beautiful Gothic cathedral, with its soaring spires, is one of more than 3,000 places of worship in New York. Uptown stands the Cathedral of St. John the Divine, the second largest church in the world. Only St. Peter's in Rome is larger. Another of the many varied religions in New York is represented by Temple Emmanuel, one of the most beautiful synagogues in the city.
Mother, it's all so busy. Seems almost like people here don't go to sleep. And big. There's so many things to see and to do. Seems more like a whole world than a city. Cultural? You mean like libraries and museums and stuff? Well, no, not yet. Culture is scheduled for a little later. Tomorrow I'm booked for fun. With Bill Gray, Fran's brother. We're starting over in Coney Island and working our way up toward Central Park. He's the most. Yes. The next day I took Sally to Coney Island. Coney is probably the best known beach resort in the world. Oops. There's a surprise a minute at Coney Island. How we shot the works here. This first ride was like flying around on a giant roulette wheel. Just hang on to your girl and let her go. Sally loved it. I uh, can't say that I was unhappy about it either. Now next came the parachute jump. The chutes are hoisted to the top of a high tower and then gently float you back to Earth. Now from a distance, it doesn't look particularly exciting, but just try it sometime. Coney Island has every fun gimmick you can imagine. The giant Ferris wheel is one of the largest in the world. But the roller coaster is what really has you breathless. From the moment they first release the car to climb to the top of the steep incline. The higher you go up, the faster you come down. kick out. Wanted to take another ride. To me, I was ready for something more relaxing. Sally thought that was a real good idea, too. So before we knew it, we were at 59th Street and 5th Avenue. These horses and carriages, I think they call them Victorias, look a little incongruous on modern 5th Avenue. But that's just one of the things that makes New York the interesting place that it is. What a contrast. Right in the very heart of this bustling metropolis, you're out in the country, riding along the pleasant tree-shaded drives of Central Park. I showed Sally where I used to roller skate as a kid. And the fountain near the mall, where we used to sail our boats. Sally couldn't get over this change of pace right in the middle of the world's busiest city. New York changes, the kids and baseball, they'll always be the same. A little further along, a pleasant lake. Sally and I were going to rent a boat, but we decided to visit the zoo instead. New York really has several zoos. This one's in Central Park, and there's an even larger one in the Bronx. The apes and monkeys can always be counted on to act more human than people. And the polar bears just mope around, waiting for the colder weather. Old Man Giraffe, the animal skyscraper, feels quite at home in this vertical city. He's always a big hit with zoo visitors. as are the lions in the Bronx Zoo. They enjoy an outdoor range without bars, just like the African belt. There's a children's zoo, too, where the small fry can play around with domestic animals to their heart's content. On the Fifth Avenue side of Central Park stands the Metropolitan Museum of Art, a treasury of some of the world's greatest masterpieces.
The Met is also famous for its fine collections of armor, sculpture, historic costumes, and Egyptian antiquities. For those leaning more toward the modern in art, well, New York has that too. And the sculpture garden at the Museum of Modern Art is a good place to find some very interesting pieces. And some that are, well, controversial. We all agreed that we'd like to see a good show. So Sally and I took Fran to the famous Radio City Music Hall. Now, this is another superlative. The largest theater in the world. And the Rockettes put on a dancing performance unique in the world of the theater. When I mentioned baseball, Sally said, sure, she'd just love to see one of those big league games. So before she could change her mind, we slipped up to the Yankee Stadium to see the Yanks take on one of their American League rivals. I explained to her, of course, that uh, New York also has two other teams, the Giants and the Brooklyn Dodgers. In the fall, King football takes over. At the stadium, the polo grounds, and on nearby college gridirons, you can see top flight professional and college football every week during the season. Then we went to Belmont Park. I didn't have to explain the rules of this game to Sally. She had her form sheet out and had picked a winner before I could get to the ticket window. The horse I picked looked like this slow motion shot of a steeplechase race. In the winter, they're skating at the outdoor restaurant at Radio City. For indoors, the winter sports fans flock to Madison Square Garden for some big league hockey, the fastest game in the world. This is real rough sport. Another popular sport is boxing. New York has put on more than its share of championship fights. Finally, I took Sally down to the bright lights of Times Square. Now, here is something you can see nowhere else on the earth. A million flashing lights in the center of the glamorous theatrical district. Here is a sign maker's art to the nth degree, beckoning you to see a show, eat a candy bar, or travel to glamorous places. We were out on the town, so we took in the entertainment for which New York is so famous. We dined and danced. Big brassy nightclubs, little side street spots, swing music and hot. New York has them all. Music in many temples is the heartbeat of this city that never sleeps. Then the shortest month on record came to an end. And we all drove Sally to the airport for a flight back home. TWA announces the departure of flight 912, Paris, Rome, and Cairo. All aboard, please. Dad told Sally she'd really have some explaining to do if she got on that plane by mistake. But Sally told Dad not to worry. She and Fran were already planning on that trip for next year. Frankly, I, for one, certainly hated to see Sally go. All of us had come to like her very much. And I think she was a little sorry to end her visit, too. While we watched Sally's plane taxi out from the terminal at International Airport, Fran was already planning her flight back to college. But I got to thinking I might like to go west for a little while myself.
Sally wrote us the very next day, telling how much she'd enjoyed being here with us, seeing New York for the first time. She told how she felt when she looked down on the Statue of Liberty as she flew west over lower Manhattan in the harbor. That was her last glimpse of the skyline of Manhattan. And as far as Sally was concerned, one of the real exciting years of the world. As her flight continued westward, she leaned back and thought again of the many wonderful things she'd seen. Brooklyn Bridge, the cloud-piercing skyscrapers, the soaring towers of Rockefeller Center, the impressive United Nations building, the millions of glittering lights of Times Square. And Sally knew she'd be back again soon on another flight over the fabulous skyline of New York. <laughs>